Uh, so this is Nugget RT Gen 2. Um, just going to show you a little bit around it and what some differences are by memory. Um, the front box first. You can see it's now a big steel box. Got a lid up top and two drawers on either side. So your lid up top. It's just all your poles, winder, and other sort of random things in there. All got rubber seals around it. They seem to seal up nicely so far, haven't driven down dirt or dust roads. And yeah, box here. I said it can take a Weber, however, only one downside is a handle in there. Oh, there it goes. So, so the handle touches. So you lift it up a bit, pull it out, and then slide it all the way out. And if it's like a baby cue, I wouldn't put anything larger in it, otherwise, it won't fit. Um, we're going to put the Weber in there. We mainly put the weather in the car. This is it to test the fit. Um, see, there's that, that drawer. We'll go around the other side. There's a drawbar. Big gal steel drawbar. Elko landing leg. On this side, I've got the annex on, so tight. <laughs> Two four and a half kilo gas bottles. Slides out. Plumbed in, and they just have their own gas bottle holders mounted to the drawer itself. Up in the back there, that's the second one. Nice slides. And also need a compression box. Before, there's your tool, uh, your tools, your, your poles, and other random crap that can go in there. And that's the front box. And next we've got the kitchen. I believe the kitchen's stayed the same. Uh, you've got the big storage box up top. I don't mind mess. I'm still in the middle of packing everything into it. Little auto sensor lights there. Um, so with the kitchen there's a dual hand operation. And tabs. All the way out. A little flip up. And you're on and off for your water. Plug. Two burner gas stove. And so here. A little pull out table. And you store all sorts of other goods. Kind of like your bottom drawer in your kitchen. Close that up. There is a leg in the pole drawer that comes down there, supports it up a little bit, stops the sway. <coughs> And you got your hot water, cold water, so you run a blue hose from that blue hose from there to there for cold, from there to there for hot. Uh, out of the bottom is a long hose which reaches a fair way under the camper. And then you got your gas hose which you pull out and chuck on your little fitting there. So you can cook up some good food. <coughs> Do you have a 12 volt socket there? If you want to connect into me. And next cupboard. I oh, like your pantry, but that's what we use it for. Big drawer. Bit of a crappy spot because if you want to store stuff down here, you don't have a lot of room. So people have suggested in raising up the drawers. Um, give you a bit more clearance through the bottom here. Single handed our pantry. All the stuff that's going to make lots of noise and you're driving out right. Right, so the right side. Rear right is your electrical box. Yeah. 
fire extinguisher. There's your 240 volt um, plug in, charge batteries at home. Power point up top there. Mm -hmm. 200 to 100 amp hour batteries. Um, fuel tank. I had to figure this one out earlier on. That's your plugs and that's your lights. Another USB in 12 volt plug, circuit breaker, and another circuit breaker up back there. As simple as isolator on, all your settings come on. Yeah, battery sitting at 94. That's using the water a fair bit yesterday. Running through lights, I've gone through half a tank. Apparently, it's a 100 litre tank. We'll see. Um, so that does your plugs, gets all these plugs going. Okay, lights on. Oh, this one's wide. Yeah, there we go. Lights off. And that one does your light on the other side. It's only got one light. Oh, and your draw lights. In this sense, I'll leave that one on. Um, so, electrical box. Pretty basic. Fire extinguisher. Center box, same as the other side. Just a big drawer with bugger all gap in there. Underneath, here is your water pump that turns your water pump on and off. I'm not sure if I'll have the tap on. Mm -hmm. um, and this one, there you go, so light switches on. Follow this sensor. Yeah, full through storage. And down here is your water pump. Uh, I'm not sure what's in the old model. Maybe it's any different. That's upside down. Let's see if I can. See yeah. little. That's what they have. A little strainer in there. Piece of mine. All plumbed in. And that's all that is in that box. That just like I said turns on the pump. Probably have to go through check the connectors because I did find one of them on the outside of the trailer. It wasn't pushed all the way in. All the things get overlooked, but that's standard. Right, then we'll go have a look at the cage. Um, got the annex on and in and around it. Mm, that's the annex. 2.1 on the 2200 high view. Let's have a look inside. It's a bit dirty, but that's the room you got inside. There's enough room. I've got the rear wall rolled up just so I can get into these boxes. Um, enough room on there for a swag for a single person. And still have space here to climb up to the actual annex. It would be good if there was a tie down ring on the outside of here just to pull that out a little bit more. Stops it bowing in so much. So you get like an arm's width of gap in here. Um, you come up here, there's your little awning for the annex uh, for the 2200. You didn't have the annex on, so that's where it zips up. So you're still protected by the sectional in here. Your ladder will come out into the elements. Right, and going up the ladders. There you go, so that's inside the high view. Big mattress. I haven't really measured it out to see how big it is. Uh, yeah, like it's probably better. 50, maybe 70 mil foam mattress. Um, or removable layer, I believe. I haven't checked it again. Um, I've used gas assisted for pack down and set up. Quite easy to do. Uh, it's got these bungee cords here, which you run from the point there to the same position on the other side. So when you pack it up, it pulls all the loose stuff inwards, so it's not hanging out so much. 
as a net. Still gotta try and figure out how that thing works. Yep. Um, what else we got? Oh, yeah. These little pockets are on either side. Store your phones, wallets, keys, all that sort of good gear. You can open up that side as well. And um, you, know, you want to escape out over your awning, again, I guess. Uh, you got your sky windows. The only thing is, if you got the um, tropical cover, on, tropical cover on, you can't see out. However, if you unzip the fly mesh and the main flap, it does give you a lot better airflow, and you're still protected by the tropical cover. But if you want to see the stars, remove your tropical cover. Otherwise, you ain't seeing anything. So yeah. Big, big bed. It's massive. It's wife, myself, with plenty of room so we're not fighting or kicking each other. Which is always good. Um, there is only access to the outside world through here. Just through these little hinge flaps. I don't know how well you can see it, but it velcros on the outside. Just because of where it pivots, you can't really put material in there. Right, let me give you a flap on the inside and the outside so you can see all the bugs, the cold air. Cold air. Fly mesh is open. Seal off the bugs, pretty much. Yeah, that's the, the high view. Really looking forward to getting out and trying it out. It's massive. Looking down, it sits quite high at two, two, two meters, two point one. Oh, it's two point something. No, one point nine, one point nine meters from floor to base of rooftop ten. Now it's one of the reasons why we went with the two point one annex is because the other one only went from oh my god one something to 1.6 is what it's recommended off the top of my head can't remember um, and this one goes from 1.9 to 2.1 so there is a little bit of the bucket floor which fully unzips that plastic floor can remove so then you just got the walls easy clean out brilliant um, fully unzips and then you can just have the walls on the ground but yeah so this one's up to 2.1 they are folded up a little bit yes but if there's uneven ground it will still cover and um, give you enough touch to the floor and touch to the ground so it's not pulling in any awkward positions uh yeah and then we'll go through the actual trailer frame and what's underneath it and all that good gear So, under the trailer, that's just your little breather for your gas storage up in here. Gas steel um, drawbar, they painted in an actual sound deadening all around the frame. There's your gas lines, bummed in, goes to the rear, all that sort of good stuff. Um, all your pivots. Now on your suspension have grease points, like the old one. It's still running that Asian red suspension tubes and springs. One day that'll get changed to something a bit better, a bit stronger. Um, the bolts seem to be a bit of a higher tensile bolt, I'm guessing due to the issue of bolt snapping like last time. Um, Electric brakes still all the same. There's a hundred litre water tank at the back, so there's no more water tank at the front. Just the one poly water tank with a checker plate, aluminium checker plate guard around it. What else have we got under here? Nothing too fancy. Yeah. 
Let's go through the process of getting water to your shower system. So, simple as a nice layer of fun. Yep, got power. Now you don't really need to touch anything else. Nice load is on. Turn your gas on in your um, actual gas box, depending if you've got the old model. Gas is on the outside. This model, gas is on the inside. Um, turn your pump on. You'll hear it start pumping until it gets a water lock. Come around to your gas. Make sure it's all connected up right. Got an on off switch in the back here. Turn it on. Come up to your actual shower rose. Yeah. Here we go, up. Sorry about it flashing. 31, 33, 34, 37, 38, 39, come on, 40. It's sitting at 40 at the moment. 41, it'll slowly climb up. You can recycle it to get it hotter. That's the pressure coming out of there. It's pretty good, I think. Good enough for a shower. 41. Yeah, you need to turn it off. And then the water stops and it turns off. Done. Hot water. And a bit of a mess, cables everywhere. Uh, this is a cage. <clears throat> now, it does sit a lot higher than the old cage. So, your rooftop's actually sitting up higher. Um, more storage in there. Um, as you got, means you gotta be careful when buying the annex because you got your two, one might not fit. We went to do the 2.1, just in case there's uneven ground for it to sit on. Yeah, that's the cage, and then the actual awning bracket. You can see I've modified it to something completely different. It's not the swing up bracket, because the swing up bracket went on, pumped it up too high, could put these rods on, and also this main bar here uh, was up too high and would sit up around about here. Actually, no, it was a lot higher than that. It was up pretty much where that window is which didn't work, so I changed it to those brackets and now it sits out nicely and a good height so do need to push it forward just so it closes up that gap there a bit more that's the awning on it beautiful awning, got one on my car as well love it and um, hot water system oh yeah, that's another one Jerry can holders on the back now. Look at that. Two jerry can holders. 15 amp plug. Um, as with the other ones, you've still got bolt plugs everywhere 12 volt, USB, 12 volt, USB. Everywhere. Power everywhere. Comes with your two recovery points on each side. And two hitches. Four legs all round. And right, here's the other water control and gas. But yeah, well, it's meant to come with a dual car, but at the time there was no dual cars around. So they fitted the Smart Tech. Honestly, I like it. Gets up to about 51 degrees beautifully. Um, just in those settings. Nice pressure coming out of the actual shower rows and out of the actual tap itself. 